Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, we will be learning about conditional access within this lecture. In the previous lecture, we learned about multi-factor authentication and now it's time to learn about the conditional access. So what exactly conditional access? So this conditional access is nothing but it's an automated access control that strengths your user lock on and it will grant the access for your cloud applications. So to get this conditional access benefits, you need to have the at least Azure AD premium uh, P1 license and if you have the P2, that's uh, really good so that you can use most of the other Azure AD premium features also. So in my entire demo, which is coming up in the next lectures, we will be working with P2 license so that I can show you all the all the features that are part of conditional access as well as the part of Azure AD. Now, so what exactly this conditional access? As we talked about the conditional access is an automated access control that strengthens your user sign in and access to your cloud application. So in this lecture, what we do is we will begin with overview, which talks about what exactly conditional access. So and the later point, we will be jumping into the uh, policies uh, which are specific to the conditional access and then we also talk about within the policy how, what, where and uh, who's going to do so. 3Ws and 1H we will be you know, talking about Azure policies. Later we talk about the best practices within this lecture and also we talk about some of the do's and don'ts of its uh, respect to the best practices and that's not the end and also we will be talking about the deployment methods. So these are the things which are scheduled within this lecture. If we break this statement, conditional access allows you to implement automated access control decisions for accessing your cloud apps that are based on some conditions that you set it up. At the same time, you also need to remember that your users uh, will have to use their username and password to log in uh, on the Azure resources because uh, conditional access is not the first factor authentication method. That means post to the entering the username and the password, you are setting some conditions to grant the access if they are coming based on some location or some risk factor, which we talk about in the next like, next uh, slide. Uh, so you need to remember that it's not the first factor authentication. At the same time, it's not considered as your first uh, line of defense uh, scenarios like DDoS, like denial of service attack. However, the information that is gathered from the sign-in, um, it may not be the uh, DDoS, uh, it may not be protecting you as a first line uh, of the defense, but it will give you the information from where the user logged in, like the risk of the login information, location, and other criteria that you set it uh, for the multi-factor authentication. So that information, you can put it out and you can uh, get that information from the logs so that, uh, you, so that you can use that information and you can create further level of hardening of your environment and uh, set access policies uh, for your applications uh, based on some kind of you know, conditions uh, with the conditional access. So let's think about some common scenarios like sign-in risk. For example, uh, we can determine whether or not you have an access to your environment. Uh, let's say Azure detects a bad actor um, where the user enters a leaked credentials, for example, and user will need more information such as requiring a multi-factor authentication challenge. So if that's a challenge is not met, then uh, we can block the access to the applications to use because we are unable to prove that the user is not able to provide the multi-factor authentication. Let's say is not able to provide a ping or maybe a phone call or maybe validate his uh, sign-in other factor. So uh, that's one of the example for the uh, risk based we can take. Now let's think about other common scenarios like um, maybe a location. So when we talk about the location, uh, perhaps we do not want to provide our required multi-factor authentication for the users who are currently coming from my on-premises. Instead, we want that uh, to come from in 
internet not from the intranet so I can I can set such kind of you know conditional access policies uh, based on the location and we can do that um, even based on the countries and regions and even IP addresses trusted IP addresses other common scenarios we can think about would be the device management let's say uh, if the user is coming uh, from a corporate device that means a company owned device then we might not need uh, to validate maybe his uh, multi-factor authentication or we can simply skip and allow the application but if user coming from his bring on uh, his own device feature then we can uh, configure such kind of you know conditions to block or to prove one more layer of security so that uh, we can grant the access for those applications so these are the common scenarios and last one would be the client application as we talked about the client applications are a kind of applications uh, which are hosted within your azure uh, azure or maybe on premises where you want to you know, grant the access of let's take an example has as hr applications so what would happen is uh, how this access was granted if you try to understand so what would happen is you have to set some kind of access policies so that will determine the conditional access so well uh, by doing some kind of you know conditional access policies to be created as a first step uh, with the focus of the conditional access uh, would be more based on the uh, different criteria so we talk about that criteria uh, within this uh, small uh, ppt i'll try my best to put it here the first one would be the when this happens uh, do this so other one would be when this happens do this so when this happens is what exactly is uh, here uh, who you are and based on a user group or membership or maybe what you're trying to access or maybe required user applications or maybe other locations like um, we talked in the previous lecture previous slide about location and sign in risk all that factors will be con uh, will be considered uh, within this policy so it will actually uh, self questionary kind of thing when this happens uh, what you're trying to access what cloud applications you're trying to specifically trying to access or user group membership and applications required to create conditional access policies we also consider other condition access such as the locations we talked about or risks and operating system version device that you're trying to uh, use like whether it is a bring your own device or corporate owned device all that factors we would consider when these conditions are met or not met example if it is met what will happen if it is not met what to be done then we we say that do this so in this do this when we say do this that is considered as the access control so let's talk about the in that consider uh, access control we have two different types of access control here the most popular one uh, would be the grant um, access directly uh, to the uh, required resources however in order to uh, gain access you as a user either you have to use multi-factor authentication or, and also you might uh, configure here your device must be complaint so this is um, actually complaint is comes under Intune so where if you, if you're using the device management solution from Intune it will check for that validation and it will give you that complaint condition so if that also meets then it will ask uh, some other conditions also like hybrid join all that so if it the hybrid join devices like windows workstation or you have to use an approved client app so like for example when i say approved client app uh, you can use the outlook app not as a gmail let's say when i say the difference between this is if you configure uh, your office 365 subscription specific uh, emails that's your company mails in gmail app it's not going to grant you access what it checks is uh, it will validate the application must be approved so the approved app is uh, in this case outlook similarly if you're trying to access from the ios devices uh, instead of the apple mail it will have to be configured on 
Outlook app. Then only it will grant the access. So you are blocking and you are uh, making sure that you are allowing the right resources, right apps. Uh, that's called to do this. So that kind of configurations you can do that and we're going to focus on um, grant access this is a grant access we just talked about the grant access other type uh, within this do uh, to do this would be the session control so this is very limited experience within the cloud applications and we are mostly focused on grant access instead of the session control so, so far what we talked about is we talked about the overview and then we also talked about the access policies like who, what, where and now we also talked about a little bit of the uh, policies. Uh, after that now it's time to talk about the best practices and within this what are the do's and don'ts and then we talk about the deployment policies. So that's where uh, we are currently so let's uh, before we jump into uh, do's and don'ts um, you see here this is another diagram where you have a uh, different kind of devices which are where you set it off a different conditions like a user based or group based membership and different type of devices like a combination of your Android iOS or Windows devices or hybrid devices so what they are trying to do is uh, they are they might have a source of different locations or IP addresses or something and different applications you are actually setting some kind of you know, policies effectively and, uh, in the real time you are actually managing the risk and then effectively applying the policies so that way you are actually granting the access if it is required a limited access or the full-fledged access for your cloud-based applications so it's time for the best practices to to talk now the best practices side uh, do not configure all users or all cloud applications uh, kind of you know policies when you try to create a policy do not uh, include all users do not include all cloud applications and moreover do not block yourself um, let's say you need to be uh, as an exception otherwise what would happen is if that policy also to apply to you uh, you might get uh, if something goes wrong you might get locked completely you can't even access the Azure portal to configure which is your interface right so make sure that you know you will be you know, working on that and also required complaint devices uh, specific and required domain join and required app protection policies all user configuration all cloud apps all device platforms these things are very carefully you need to apply like blocking access so this kind of you know configuration blocks your entire organization uh, specific and then uh, it's not a good actually because it will block all the access for all the applications and other one would be the do's so some of the good uh, thing is first thing when you try to create a policy use there is an option called what if so uh, within the GUI you also have what if so use this condition and test it whether it's gonna apply or uh, it, it's gonna work how it's gonna behave whether it's gonna grant the access or not that kind of you know result you would be you know, getting if you use the what if so I would always recommend you to you know create a policy um, with the what if and if works fine then you know move further and also always use the pilot access groups not the entire uh, organizations or all users all groups all applications do not use this. instead of use a limited begin with the limited and go for accurate and also do not start with everyone never ever start with everyone this will block entire communication if something goes wrong you cannot even log into a portal to reconfigure or to undo any changes and you have to end up with a Microsoft call and it's a difficult hard time where you need to know answer you need to prove yourself and then uh, you can you know release 
uh, that kind of in a situation it's a very hard time trust me in in between you might uh, be you know blocked all the applications and a lot of escalations would come into the picture and also you need to have some of the exclusions always for your admin persons including uh, your global admins uh, that's how you have to de uh, define and being locked off uh, locked out admin portal is really bad as we discussed um, these are the some of the do's and don'ts that being said do's and don'ts uh, concludes here and we will jump into uh, how the UI looks so this is how the UI looks uh, for you we are going to work in the next lecture with the demo like you have your uh, policies assignments and access control and also the user groups uh, which you want to you know scope as the include and exclude and also the conditions here what you want to you know set it and the, whether you want to grant access if so the, we, we talked about the access controls two things one would be the grant other one would be the session based so we will work with the grant mostly and we also uh, have a look on session also in the upcoming demo but for now the grant if you see here you want to block or grant or if you want a grant you will you know ask the end user to uh, prove with the multi-factor authentication and also you can set whether this mission must be hybrid join or maybe marked as a complaint from Intune with this which is your device management solution or you want to you know required approved client app as we talked about Outlook versus Gmail app or maybe um, your Apple Mail uh, versus your Outlook app or maybe Exchange Active Sync and also app protection policies which are additional uh, policies which comes from your Intune management uh, device management solution so all that uh, kind of you know, conditions you can um, apply and you can you know create it so that concludes how the UI specific it looks and also we talk uh, and also whatever we have so far talked that actually represents this kind of you know workflow um, it's a simple workflow which we can um, have a look on it so that we can easily conclude like you know if when you're starting is this device is targeted by a conditional policy it will validate if it is yes it will actually go and checks any of the exemptions are available within the conditional policy or um, maybe if it is not then it it's gonna check uh, for the device management whether this device is managed by Intune uh, for the compliance policy if it is managed by Intune it will check whether this device must be corporate owned or maybe uh, bring your own device if that's the case whether this device has the complaint has uh, enabled or not and then um, it goes to uh, the whether you want to you know allow the block if it is not the case it will block otherwise it will check for the um, uh, allowing the access here in this case if it is complaint it will allow but if this is not managed by Intune which is in our case so what happens is uh, is this domain joint PC if it is uh, not a domain join it is gonna blocking because uh, that must be enrolled right either it must be joined into your Azure AD or maybe your hybrid join now if that's a case then it will grant access here so we are gonna uh, perform this kind of you know workflow i hope this is uh, useful for you the entire uh, presentation uh, and we so for what we have talked is within this we talked about the conditional access uh, the definition uh, which comes under overview and then policies so the policies uh, includes who what where and how and also we talked about the pol uh, best practices for those policies some of the do's and don'ts and deployment um, configurations how the ui looks and we will demonstrate this entire thing in the next lecture i hope this is useful for you thank you for watching this